I am really excited for today's project. We're going to be building a router sled to help us flatten slabs or long pieces of wood or other things that I can't fit through the jointer. For this router sled, I made some plans that I'm going to be following for this build. The plans are really detailed and there's a link in the description if you're interested in buying them. They're over 30 pages long and they have cutting and drilling templates, full color, zoomed in, all the details are fully in there. So it should be a pretty easy build and again, I'm following the plans for this build so they work. The first thing that we need to do is cut out our parts from plywood. I recommend a really high quality plywood. I'm going to be using Baltic birch. Uh, three quarters is what I designed this for, or the 18 millimeter plywood. Using a plywood with a lot of plies will help so that it doesn't split. We're going to be drilling, cutting, screwing into, doing a lot to this. So we're asking quite a bit uh, from our material. You don't really need that much, about a 10 inches by 48 inches. So if you get a sheet or a half sheet, it's just a little bit. So let's get cutting. cut out, I'm going to use some templates that I designed and I'm printing out. I printed them on cardstock so they're nice and durable. So I only need one template per type of wood. You could do it uh, on a piece of paper and then glue it on if you want. In fact, you could do that and then cut this stuff out of say a band saw in case you don't have a table saw and get the other dimensions off of that. But I think it's easier just to do it repeatedly on the table saw, and then use some of the thicker templates, mark the holes for drilling. For the larger holes, that is in the standard drill bit size, I have a variable hole cutter, and I'll use that and just set it to the diameters that I need. I really like that. I think that it works best well. They're really cheap, and then you kind of get, kind of, then you get an infinite size of holes. So let's get at that. Four inch by three inch blocks, we want to drill a hole in there that's as perfectly sized to your two inch EMT conduit as you can. Since we already cut out the circle, we only need to trim out the bottom part and then mark that on one of the blocks so that we can cut that little piece out. And I'm actually going to just cut this on the bandsaw, and I'll use this one to mark all the others. Then on these ones, this side I'm actually just gonna use my square to mark it. Now on each of these dots, we need to drill a hole, according to the plans, 5 sixteenths. Well, I'm an idiot. You know how I drilled all of those holes? See here? I drilled them not the size of the tap, but of the bolt, the plans were right. I just did it wrong, cause I'm an idiot. 
Anyways, ugh. follow the plans. Don't make it the size for these to go through. Make it the tap size. I'll remake those and then we'll do this right. I like to tap these with just the bolt that I'm actually gonna be using. You can use a proper tap, but I find that using the screw yields the strongest hold later on and I don't have any issue doing that. So I'm just gonna run. I have a long one here. I'll be using these shorter one inch or one and a quarters later on. But I'll just use these long ones that I already have on hand to tap these out for me. And then it's as simple as that. And these will just screw in later when we need them. So we're gonna do that to each of the blocks. What we're gonna do is run in the bearings into each hole now that they're tamped. I'm going to use an actual washer that I have. So I've got a washer, the bearing, on the 3 8 screw. I'm using the one inch ones. And I'm just gonna set this at like five and screw it in. All right, now we just do this to all of them. Now that we've got everything cut out, our holes cut, the bearings in place, it's time to glue and screw our assemblies together. We've got two pieces to the roller plates that we have. The one is for the two and a half inch EMT. And then we have this other one for the three quarters EMT. We're gonna be gluing on the blocks that we put the bearings into uh, to create our roller assemblies that everything can ride on. First, we're gonna to need to mark the places where we're gonna glue, and we'll do that on both the three quarter inch EMT face blocks, and then also for the two inch face block. For this glue up, we just line up the blocks with the lines that we drew. These are just to make sure that it's pretty easy to line up the bearings with the center of the conduit. If you're doing this yourself and not following along with the plans, that's all that you need to do is draw out those lines so that the bearings are centered on the conduit, uh, 120 degrees each of them for three around it. So this has tacked up, it's holding okay. And we need to glue it to the other side, just these two. All right, that feels flush, top feels flush. I'm gonna Go on this clamp just a little bit more, making sure nothing moved. So this isn't ultra tight, it's really just holding it in place. And then I'll let that dry up. I'm gonna drive a screw between the face plate and the side blocks just to hold it in extra strong. If you want, you could just let this fully glue up, but by driving a screw in, we can move on to the next stop step a little bit sooner, just after it's mostly tacked up. And I think it adds some strength. Now we just add a screw into each one of those. You do want to be a little bit careful that your screws are not too long because this bolt is here, but I've got some one inch screws. One and a quarter would be fine too, I believe. And let's add some reinforcement. <laughs> Now that we have two of these blocks glued into each of the full roller assembly, 
This is where, to me, the magic happens and why I think this technique works really well without it. You truly need to be super, super accurate. So if things have moved around, or you're a little worried, don't worry, this will take care of it. What, we're, what we do is we're going to slide on the full roller assembly onto the EMT conduit, both the two inch and the three quarters inch. And then we just place this block and push it up so that it fully contacts, have glue on there, clamp it down, screw it in, let it dry then on the rail. You'll have all of the blocks holding tight up against it. Then when it's fully dried, you can slide it off and it will be a tight block. Now that we finished up all the bearing blocks, we were able to clamp everything on, get them holding on really well, really making sure that all six bearings are touching, that's the most important, and they're running smoothly on the EMT conduit, we can let that dry. I recommend waiting around two hours. Uh, for me, the glue dries up pretty good in that amount of time, and you can just slide them off and we're going to countersink and drive in some screws just to make sure that everything holds really stable. Now we need to drill into the clamp blocks for the two inch EMT. I've got a deep hole on the top and then a skinnier one on the bottom. We're going to drill all the way through and that's so that we can feed a screw in. If you have longer screws than me, you could just run all the way through. I have these Craig hand head screws that are two inches. So I want to be able to drill through there so that they just stick out a little bit. And I'll be able to use these to clamp the EMT conduit into place. Now that everything has been cut, drilled, glued together, bolted up, we really just have assembly, which is really just screwing things together from this point. But before I do that, I want to make it a little bit nicer to use, add a little bit of creature comfort to it. I'm going to chamfer some of the edges where my arms might be so I don't rub on them so much. I'm going to sand it down a little bit and just sort of clean up the look of it, make it so there's less places to get caught on or scratch myself because I'm really good at doing that. So let's make this a little bit nicer for ourselves down the line. Now on the router plate, we need to fit it to whatever router that you have. So for my router, I have this plastic base and I just took this off, unscrewed it from the router, laid that on the piece of wood, marked it up, and then I can take it to the drill press and drill out the holes for mounting it to the router so that the router is nice and stable on there. And then also I just did a big hole in the middle so my router bit easily fits through and there's space around it. This is gonna vary for your router. At this time you may wanna cut down your pieces to be a little bit shorter if you find that your router isn't as big as like mine is. To raise up the three and a quarter inch conduit, I designed some risers and 3D printed them. You can make them out of wood if you need to, uh, but I have the 3D printer and it's pretty easy just to print them up on that. So I printed those out and what I am going to do is attach them to some runners. I have some long 10 foot LVL beams, which are pretty flat. And so those are gonna work well for me. If you have a table that you want to attach them to, you can totally do that. I could attach it straight to my torsion box table, which I have previously built. But I'm gonna use these runners because I can guarantee that these runners are flat. I could always join them in the future if they get a little bit off. And by attaching these to the side, of my torsion box, I can raise and lower them 
uh, to accommodate for different pieces or different thicknesses of wood. After we have the 3D printed spacers all printed out, screwed down, and ready to go, we need to put on top of them the 3 quarter inch EMT conduit. This conduit, I found the easiest way to attach it is to just put some clamps on either end. What's really cool is these cheap Harbor Freight bar clamps. They actually fit inside of it, so you can just clamp it down a little bit and hold it just on the two ends. We need to drill and countersink a couple of holes in our various plates for screwing this all together. So take on your router plate, and this is gonna be on the back side or the bottom side. We're just gonna mark. Now we just need to run in a couple of screws or countersink for a couple of screws on there. To do the side assemblies, we're just going to put on two of the rollers. I'm gonna put these on opposite sides. I have no idea if that matters at all. And then what we wanna do is line up as best you can and make sure that you pre-drill. This is super important. The plywood really wants to break out. It's not very thick. And don't tighten it up too much. You want this still to be able to move. So now that it's attached there, we're gonna come on the opposite side and get that flush on that corner. And I'm actually gonna run, see if I can get a clamp on here. All right, get that as flush as you can. And then again, pre-drill. And before you go ahead and drill the rest of them, you want to make sure that it's sliding smoothly over. That feels great to me. Feels nice. Uh, you can see it's not quite flush on that side, but that's perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it just needs to ride nicely. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just gonna now uh, pre-drill the rest of these and drive in the rest of the screws. All right, that looks good. For the router plate, we need to attach these two rollers on either side. What I'm going to recommend is that you fully attach one side and then you just put one screw in the other side. And again, I'm just gonna run one into that side. This makes this stable and then I can move this will help me in the alignment for the next step. For these clamps that go over the two inch MT conduit, I'm just gonna cut a little thin strip of shelf liner. And this will help these clamps grip on a little bit better. This isn't necessary, but I find it helpful. If you find that these are too loose, you can always cut this down a little bit and it will grip a little bit better, or you can add something like this just on the inside 
and then it'll hold on when you clamp it down better. So we're gonna run this conduit. I'm going to feed it on. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to line that up kind of as best I can. And I'm gonna throw a clamp on here for now. All right, that looks roughly lined up. I'm gonna use one of these clamps kind of make sure the conduit is roughly where it needs to be. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start on one side over here and get this clamped and held in place. Again, if you want, you could drill holes in here. That's what I did before, but I think these clamps are gonna be more removable and adjustable. So I think this is gonna work a lot better uh, but yeah, once you have that lined up, you feel good about it. We're gonna clamp down this side, these over here, slide it over and then do the other side. All right, after you have the clamps on the side, what you wanna make sure is that everything slides nice. Back and forth. So I'm liking that quite a bit. If it's not sliding like that, loosen up a couple of the screws, slide it until it's nice and smooth. So then what I'm gonna do is now I need to screw in the remaining screws. I'll counterseam in from the bottom and get those attached. And then we are assembled. I'm really happy with the way that the router sled turned out. It's everything that I hoped for. It should be because I designed it myself and also it's my third iteration. So I've learned what I wanted and what I didn't need. So if you're interested, again, there's a link in the description to buy some plans that really helps support me. Also, if you liked this video, a like would be awesome. And hopefully that this at least inspired you to make a router sled and get flattening some slabs and boards and things like that. I've got a lot of big projects coming.